Hello and welcome to But Have You Heard About, where I and a guest talk about a new historical-based topic each time. My guests will be presented with three topics to choose from. One is a topic for them, one is a shared interest of ours, and the last one is for me because I love hearing my own voice. Today's guest is my amazing, super awesome, excellent, talented sister, Cassidy. What, what? Woo-woo. So this is our very first episode, so bear with us, but we want to talk a little bit about some fun stuff. So I have three topics for you to choose from, Cass. Our first one is, dun dun dun, Florence and the nursing machine. Our second topic is Lamar Hunt, AKA Super Bowl's daddy. And number three is, don't know much about the know nothing party. What would you like to talk about? Hmm. How about we start with Florence and the nursing machine? That is a perfect, excellent choice. And just so everybody knows, my amazing, super awesome, talented sister is in nursing school. So it makes sense for her to casually pick you know, <laughs> who is considered the pioneer of modern nursing. Um, and she actually founded the first nursing school, which is at St. Thomas's Hospital um, in Nightingale Training School for Nurses now. Still in London, still there forever and ever. And she's best known for her night rounds to aid the wounded during the Crimean War. However, as much as I want to talk about Florence Nightingale, I want to talk about the other woman who actually was there during the same time during the Crimean War, Mary Seacole, who is actually a British Jamaican businesswoman and a nurse who set up a British hotel during the lines during the Crimean War as well, but she has been like forgotten about throughout history. So before today, did you know who she was? I did not know who she was. <laughs> I had not heard her name. And I think... I mean, she's a British Jamaican woman. She's a black woman hanging out in the Crimea, which is like Eastern. I'm not looking at a map, so I'm gonna feel real dumb. Obviously I didn't do well in geography my freshman year of high school, but it's Eastern Europe near Russia. So it's not like someone from Jamaica to come over there seems like a huge stretch. And like looking up of her 20s, like she wrote an autobiography about her life, which was the first, um, Black British woman to write an autobiography and to have a book published about her life, which in itself is amazing. I mean, this is what, the late 1800s we're talking about here. And she talked about her life and one of like those inspiring quotes that I, or things, not necessarily inspiring, but interesting tidbits, was that she's at a dinner party with someone, um, a white guy literally tells her, you'd be better off if you bleached your skin, which is weird. Like she's an accomplished woman. She literally learn nursing on the fly, unlike Florence Nightingale, who went to school. And like, so during the Crimean War, she was um, asked by the British Secretary of War, Sidney Herbert, to organize a corps of nurse nurses from a whole bunch of different religious practices to go over and help them. And she came up with like all the standardized stuff that we you know, know nursing to kind of start as. But Mary Siegel was also there. And there's a whole debate in Britain. Obviously, I have a Texas accent, my sister, does not have a cool Texas accent, but we obviously are Americans. And the perception that we have is that you really only have Florence Nightingale, but over in the UK, because it's Britain, they have such a weird, like divisive camp about Florence Nightingale versus Mary Seacole, where they say that basically Mary Seacole was just a healer of sorts. She was there, she didn't do anything, but you're pitting these two women against each other and first off, girl power, fuck the patriarchy, excuse my French, <laughs> but you have these two women that probably wouldn't have cared. Like literally we're talking like zero fucks given about being compared to each other. And they'd rather just be like, we did the work and we do what we should. So back in 2004, Mary Seacole was named like the most important prominent, um, I'm forgetting the title, uh, Black Britain. And for her to have that title, I was like, I've never heard of this woman before. And it's, um, and she basically was almost taken out of the history books over in the UK from what I read as well. And it's just, it's so weird. Cause you have, to me, I think it's weird. Um, and when she had a statue put up, which was also outside St. Thomas's hospital and the Nightingale, Nightingale training school for nurses that Florence Nightingale founded there was people up in arms about her statue. Cause they're like, how dare you have a statue of her just taking away from Florence Nightingale, Florence Nightingale. I mean, apparently everybody in Britain's are related to Florence Nightingale. 
the girl was literally born in Italy to a prominent, wealthy, like British noble family, and she was considered socially awkward. So she's literally me, but wealthy and British, and got to live in Florence, Italy. She was named after Florence. Weird, but not weird. I wasn't named after a city. My name's just Courtney. You know, like a man's name from the 16th century. It's cool stuff. Is it really a man's name? <laughs> was a man's name it's a courtney is originally a man's name from the 16th or 17th century yikes i know thanks a lot dad so i'm sure it wasn't just him <laughs> but so we have all these like great stories about florence nightingale then you have a statue put up of mary sequel and you have people that are huge florence nightingale advocates that are like how dare you put up a statue of her she did nothing she just existed um, she just happened to be there, which is weird that a British Jamaican woman would be in the Crimean War without a reason to be there. So, you know, whatever. Um, but I think that she's coming more to light because you, I mean, British people are white. We have like a white history. And not that I necessarily want to get on the soapbox of, oh no, we need to talk about people of color and all hist uh, um, aspects of history. But I think a lot of the facets of history, there are things that aren't talked about. And I think Mary Sequel is one of those things that's those parts of history that hasn't been talked about. She's just as important as Florence Nightingale. However, she didn't come from money. She didn't come from a, a noble family to have, you know, formal training, to have the know the know with all and to actually be able to set up a school. But she did come around as a pioneer for nursing, just not in the accolades that we put Florence Nightingale. Pretty crazy stuff, I think. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. I hadn't heard of Mary Sequel once in my education, not only before I got to nursing school, but even in nursing. I mean, we've touched on Florence Nightingale, but not at all Mary Sequel. And we didn't even talk about the Crimea, Crimean War when we were discussing Nightingale, it was really just about how she pushed nursing forward with hand washing and keeping things clean, which is also something that Sequel believed in. Exactly. And I, um, so one of the things I, I found interesting about Florence Nightingale is that she was actually proposed to by um, another like wealthy noble family um, or affluent family in Britain. And she turned the guy down um, and not like super, apparently not with haste. And she didn't turn him down the minute he asked, but seemed like molded over and was like, well, you know, I really want to pursue something I feel is morally, um, uh, what, like a moral calling to help the ill. And I thought, to me, I find that very interesting, or at least in the 1800s to a woman to be like, nah, man, I don't really want to be your wife. I want to go help out some dying people. And she got a, you know, earned a name for herself um, in London by helping out um, sick governesses. And that's why um, she was called on by the British Secretary of War right when the Crimean War was happening to be like, hey, can you go help out, you know, Britain and her allies? Because I don't know, I mean, what, the whole boys will be boys and they're nasty and dirty type of thing. I feel like that definitely was very much at play in the 1800s. Gangrene was rampant. Oh, yeah. This is what the Crimean War, if my idea of things serves me correct, it's like the middle of the 1800s, like 1850s, which yeah. is around the same time as like the Civil War, um, which, yeah, 1853. Uh, so the Crimean War starts in 1853, and, or at least that's when Mary Seacole was there. Um, and I mean, that's, a lot of diseases were very rampant. I mean, if we just look at American history with the Civil War and how, you know, you get shot in the foot and you lose your whole leg because the infection spread because nobody understood that they were supposed to actually take care of the wound as well as they should have. And you just right. don't have the supply. So like looking back or from your perspective, being in nursing school, um, you've learned about Florence Nightingale, how she's kind of, you know, the, she is the pioneer. Her, I. I would still attribute her to being, you know, the pioneer of modern nursing, um, but making sure there's a little asterisk for Mary Sequel as well. Um, what do you think is like a lasting impact um, from Florence Nightingale for nursing still? 
Cause like you mentioned yeah. like the hand washing um, and right. stuff. Yeah. I mean, just like the whole modern nursing having the, um, I guess like the, the weird insight that maybe you should be clean when you're touching an open wound sounds so foreign to me that you need to be like, people didn't think that they shouldn't have dirt or other people's blood on their hand when they operate on other people. Oh, that, that, that's funny that that's what your mind goes to. Um, one of the very <laughs> first things that we learn in nursing school is how to properly wash our hands. And I, I remember we did the fun little biology class trick where you put that gel on your hands and then you look at them with a black light and you see like all the bacteria and everything on there. And then we had to go wash our hands for like a minute. And then we did it again to see where we had missed. And it's, it's really just kind of fascinating to me that we didn't get to that point for a very, very long time in history that when we were practicing medicine and helping, you know, heal people and treating wounds and treating sickness, you know, you just kind of went in there with your hands and whatever state they were in, you know, it didn't matter if you had just touched someone's bloody stump. Now you were going and delivering a baby. Ugh. <laughs> that yeah, is that, a... that, that's yeah. what happens with doctors. They used to go work in morgues and work on cadavers and dead bodies, and then they would go deliver babies without washing their hands or putting gloves on or any sort of protective equipment. And, uh, you know, this led to a lot of mothers dying after giving birth because of infection that they acquired from dead bodies. Oh my god, the face I'm making right now is like of total disgust. Yeah. I, like, because there wasn't really, I mean, not that I'm going to put you on the spot, because I don't know, I didn't look it up before this, like the first uh, female doctor obviously wasn't in the 1800s. I mean, you had like midwives, but I think as a, you know, if you're a midwife, you're probably more likely to at least wash your hands with water, maybe not necessarily soap, um, like, you know, before that, but at least you're maybe like a little bit more cleaner than a doctor until maybe we got some more, not some more, but maybe until we started getting um, people that are like, oh, I don't know, maybe you should be clean to touch a woman when she gives birth to a baby, because that's some inside organs up in there. Ugh. Yeah, I... I I would like to assume that the women who specifically practiced as midwives were a little more hygienic and that they didn't have any contact with dead bodies, but again, it's hard to know. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we don't, there probably, there probably are some good primary sources out there talking about um, different midwife techniques of pre-1800s, but I can only imagine how rough it would be. Like, I, I know personally I would not want to live in the 1800s as much as I love talking about that time period in history, I'm just like, yeah, I kind of value that I at least have rights now as a woman versus like, even just in the 1960s, a woman couldn't open up her own credit card. And just thinking right. about the fact that we didn't have female nurses as like a prominent position or even like as a job you could actually have where it's respected until the middle of the 19th century, so like 1850s, and then after she, Florence Nightingale establishes the school, you don't, before that's like, you have some training, but only certain people can go get training, not everybody can, so you set up a school so you have it more for the masses, and I just find that to be fascinating, but what I do find the most fascinating thing is the Florence Nightingale effect, where patients fall in love with their nurses and doctors. That to me is hilarious. I have never fallen in love with any, or even have like inklings of, you're a cool person to any nurse or doctor I've had in my life. Like, you're not that great. You scare me. I, I've, I've only had those feelings towards the nurses that have helped teach me when I've been in the clinical setting. And it's like, whoa, just give me all your knowledge right now. That's about yours, it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yours is more for the knowledge. Me, I'm like, I don't even like you as a person. Like, I got yelled at for playing Pokemon Go when I had my gallbladder removed. <laughs> Wouldn't let me walk to, like, tech. They're like, you can't leave the, this wing. And I was like, watch me as I tried to hobble away with my pancreatitis self. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like this is going to wrap it up for our first episode of What Did You Hear About? Or, but have you heard about? 
obviously I know the name of my own podcast. I'm a very smart lady. But is there, do you have any closing thoughts about um, either Miss Florence Nightingale or Mary Siegel? I, I think just wash your hands, get plenty of sunlight, and make sure you clean your bed sheets. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, I heard some horror stories about bed sheets not being cleaned for like months. That is some nightingale knowledge right there. You know, that's a, that's a good one. I like it. Well, and that as our closing, make sure you change your bed sheets, wash your damn hands, you nasty individuals, and go about your day. And this is Courtney signing off. <laughs>